I didn't know necessarily the word for it or the name for it, but I knew that I wanted to do something involving crime and decompositions. Death has always held more fascination than fear for Brianna Murray. I was one of those people that like since the age of eight, I sort of like knew what I was going to do. Some people just have a calling, I guess. A forensic anthropology major at Western Carolina University, her classroom includes the school's body farm. Nobody's tried to get in or anything like that. Surrounded by a privacy fence rimmed with concertina wire, the so-called decomp facility is managed by Dr. Cheryl Johnston. Most of our people are fairly skeletonized at this point. She uses decomposing bodies to teach students how to exhume skeletons, process a crime scene, and calculate the time of death. We were just amazed at how quickly this went. Since 2007, the farm has processed about 45 bodies. About 24 lie here in various states of decay. The rest have been collected, their skeletons part of a permanent campus archive that students study for clues. Stature, ancestry, trauma, pathology. The bodies come sometimes weekly from prearranged donors or families who just can't afford a funeral. A lot of these guys come from nursing homes and you know they're maybe in a hospital gown or um, a lot of them have a diaper on. The students monitor the decay, especially in the first few weeks. That's when most of the stuff happens. You'll see the bloating and the purging and all that sort of stuff, which that's where you'll get more of the smells. There's also a few animals mostly donated roadkill. Bears smell way worse than the humans. It's like when you walk in a house where somebody's cooking food and it's like, wow, that smells really good. And then after 10 minutes, you can't smell it or it's not as strong. It's the same with decomp. Johnson describes herself as smell blind or maybe just accustomed to it. But she's admittedly less affected by how repellent death can be than how fleeting life is. It's a realization she learned earlier than most. When I was five or six years, well, four or five years old, I observed a plane crash. A mid-air collision between a tiny Cessna and a loaded passenger jet occurred right above her family home. It just happened and everything just fell out of the sky. I just knew all the adults were really upset and I didn't know why. Because it was just like, wow, this is really interesting to me. And they were all like, oh my God. <laughs> she suspects her career path may have been at least partly determined by her reaction to the carnage. Wondered how you identify people and get them back to their families, and that's what we're doing here. Find another one. Sook, sook, find another one. That same pragmatism informs the work of cadaver dog handlers, like Patty Brasky Michael. She's a Belgian Malinois. She trains at the body farm with Nala. Find him. Where is he? Not because she has any affinity for death. God forbid that there's a large disaster. But because death is a fact of life, and because a body, even a lifeless one, can bring finality and peace. You know, we do this because we want to make sure that family members can put their loved ones to rest and bring them home. Mm -hmm. Being able to give back, I think, is probably the most rewarding thing anybody can do.